Let's say, hypothetically, you're in a relationship and you are taken to meet the boyfriend's parents for the first time. And you walk in and your immediate gut reaction is, uh-oh, I don't <laughs> like her and she doesn't like me. But it's important that you like each other because this That's may true. be your future mother-in-law. What do you do? How do you change it? What specifically are the steps to creating an I like you relationship with anybody, anytime that you need anybody. to? Anybody. Hmm. And according to your book, there's even a step-by-step -step process that can get anyone to like you or want you. Is this infallible? Is it always true? I, you know, I, I, it's like I say in the book, I grew up in a really tough neighborhood of Chicago. And you had to either fight real good, mm -hmm. run real fast, or have the ability to make friends real quick. Well, I, was, I, I couldn't run that fast, I couldn't fight that hard, so I learned how to make friends real fast. And um, yeah, you can, you can make friends, you can develop relationships with pretty much anyone, mm -hmm. anytime you need to. So maybe you're your worst enemy, maybe you can find some common ground with this person. Exactly, exactly. You're essentially giving readers tools and techniques to improve their interpersonal relationships. Can you give us some specific tips that you discussed in the book? Uh, to improve interpersonal relationships? Yeah, one is um, the, the ability to um, understand how it is to change and adjust the way that you communicate so that the listener will have a higher probability of understanding you, liking you, believing you, and there will be fewer miscommunications, less stress, less problems, and you can just get more done faster and quicker. Can these tips be used universally? Can anybody use them? You know, over the years, I've literally taught thousands and thousands of people, from children, eight, ten years old, to senior citizens in their 90s. I've told, taught college professors, multimillionaires, street people, doctors, lawyers, homemakers, people with high school educations, high school dropouts, people with PhDs. Everyone can learn this information. All across the board. All across the board. The age, gender, educational background, none of that matters. And in the book, you set the ground rules which give readers understanding of how their brains operate. How do brains operate according to communication and relationships? Um, well, you know, one of the, one of the things that, that I say in the book is that we were all, our, we all learn from our experiences in life. Every one of us can be said to be the sum total of our past personal history. In order for me to get along better with you, rather than trying to make you fit my model of the world, it's better for me to understand what makes you, you, and then see the world from your perspective. So I teach people how to do that. Okay. I mean, how, how we get to be the way that we are. How your brain develops, how your early childhood programming sets up um, your beliefs, your values, your understandings, how the brain works, whether whether you're the kind of person that needs to see something to understand it, whether you're the kind of person that needs to talk about something, whether you're the kind of person that needs to actually get your hands on it and do it to understand it. So by watching you, by looking at you, there are certain nonverbal indicators that tell me how your brain is working at a specific time. Just by looking. It's just by looking. One of the things that I look at is when I ask you a question, so where do your eyes move? Do you look up? Do you look to the side? Do you, if you look, look down? Up, what would that mean? If you were to look up, that tells me that you're creating a visual image. Okay. You're seeing something inside your, your brain. If you look to the side on a horizontal, what we typically call a shifty-eyed person, mm -hmm. that's someone who's talking to themselves inside. Okay. If you look down to the right, that's someone who's into their feelings. If you look down to the left, that's a, someone who's into their logical analysis. Okay. So you, you're cut, all behavior communicates something. It's only a question of, do I understand what's 
being communicated and is it useful? Hmm. Well, you've already gone into some forms of communication that you've discussed in the book. Can you give us a little bit more detail about the different forms of communication? Well, again, it, it, one of the things that I say in the book is that we learn through our experiences in the world. It's what we see, it's what we hear, it's what we touch, it's what we taste, and it's what we smell. Through, your through our five physical senses. So if, like any other computer, if the way you input information will determine what you can then do, it makes logical sense that the brain has to organize information into what we saw, what we heard, or our kinesthetic senses of touch, taste, and smell. Okay. So all human beings have a primary or preferred software package, if you will, or way of thinking. And they use predicate or action words that represent one of those channels. So by watching someone's eyes and by listening to how they communicate, I know whether I should be visual with you or auditory with you or kinesthetic with you. And when I communicate to you on the channel that you prefer, you like it better, there's less stress, there's more understanding, there's fewer deletions, fewer distortions, and we just get along better and communication flows. So in your experience, do you think any forms of communication are better than others, or does it just depend on the person or the situation? It, it, each and every person has a primary or preferred way that they would rather receive and okay. send out information. It's up to me to have the flexibility of behavior to change and adjust what I do to match the needs of the listener. So part of the techniques that I change, teach in there is how to change and or adjust and to modify your behavior so that you have more variety available to you, so that you have more choices. And also, there's a section dealing with precision communication that's dealing with getting others to tell you exactly what you want to know. Can anyone truly be effective, a communicator, uh, improve their communication skills? Absolutely. I mean, it, it, it's, it's hilarious to me when I think about it. For instance, if you ask someone a what question, do you know what you're asking them for? What is it? Well, if you say what, you're asking them to give you a description. A description. Okay. If you ask them how, you're asking them to give you a process. Mm -hmm. If you ask why, you're asking them to give you a reason. Okay. Reasons, process, and description are all very different. That's so, true. So, just for an example, if I say to you, why did you do that? As opposed to, how is it that that behavior was the best choice? Or what was it that made you react that way? So even though it's the same question, the different phrases would elicit different Well, it's not the same question. It's, the same it's same totally question. different questions. Okay. And that's, see, human beings are very sloppy thinkers, and they're very sloppy communicators. In any given sentence, there are all sorts of linguistic violations. For instance, go into the office and get the file. Now when I say that to you, I see inside my head my office. I see the exact file that I'm talking about and I see its exact location. All of that is deleted in my communication when I say go into the office and get the file. Which office? What file? Where specifically? How will I know it when I see it? Is all assumed. Okay. So when someone communicates to you and they say something that is ill-formed, you're at a choice point. Okay. You can either pretend it didn't happen and go on like nothing happened, you can guess at or assume the meaning, or you can ask them to be more specific. I find if you stop and ask people to be specific on the front end, there are fewer miscommunications, fewer problems, less stress, less anger, and everybody is more successful. Hmm. So naturally, there are probably some critics who don't believe all the 